welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where lies win the prize. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a comedian recently voted one of the 100 most powerful women in Britain. Yes, not only is she hilarious, she can also toss a caber and drag a tractor using just her teeth. It's Sarah Millican. <laughs> A comedian who is famous for his compulsive obsessive disorder. And yes, I said that the wrong way around on purpose, just to unnerve him. It's John Richardson. <laughs> and on Lee Mack's team tonight, he's the comedy legend that gave us the anarchic shooting stars. We're no strangers to anarchy here. Uh, David Mitchell's not even wearing a tie tonight. It's Bob Mortimer. <laughs> He's the Homeland star who left Birmingham to go to Hollywood, but says one day he wants to return. Oh, he is a good actor. It's David Harewood. <laughs> and so we begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. OK, Bob, you're first up tonight. Thank you. I once set fire to my house with a box of fireworks. David Mitchell's <laughs> team. Uh, was this on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was done out of ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> what age were you? I was somewhere around about seven. I want to know where you grew up, where a seven-year-old can buy a box of fireworks. I bought them in the shop where, near where I lived in Middlesbrough. It was a box for two and six of standard fireworks. That was the brand. <laughs> standard brand. That sounds exciting. <laughs> standard fireworks. Yeah. A normal level of excitement will be intended. <laughs> yeah. For a bonfire night, you will forget. <laughs> <laughs> but it says standard, but yeah. then it's... <laughs> Well, that is standard for a firework. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in your home, yeah, and no, you're seven or eight years old. I'm seven, and I'm on my own, yeah. On your okay. own. Yeah, and what it was li what, on one of the fireworks, I think it was the sparkers, it said, not suitable for indoor use. Mm -hmm. Which, at that age, makes you think, ah, that ah. means they're OK. Could you just not read the word not when you were being... <laughs> <laughs> Did you think not was the brand? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, lovely. I, I love that not brand food. It's not for human consumption. <laughs> no, that logic that says, well, people have obviously tried them indoors. Oh, I've they're discovered just... they're not suitable. Yeah. <laughs> so therefore, I won't use them indoors because I want to live. God, if you look at a big firework, it won't say not suitable for indoors. It's so it's obvious. Yeah. Right. But well, on the sparklers, everybody. they chose to put it on. So what happened? I lit the sparkler. The, the sparks went into the box of fireworks, a standard box, <gasps> and set them off. And I carried the box of fireworks, now beginning to light, into the kitchen, and I threw them into the kitchen. <laughs> I thought it would be more suitable. <laughs> I think you're right. The kitchen of all the rooms is the most suitable for fireworks, <laughs> isn't it? it because is. of the oven, the gas, the it's... stove, there is fire naturally in the kitchen. Yeah, there's a lot of... And there's more... It's more wiped down... Yes. yes. ...less cloth. <laughs> so, so what happened then? They went off in the, um, What kitchen. was the sound like? Was it bing, wee? <laughs> no, these were only standard. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh you know, I, can't remember, I remember, as I'm sat here now, um, wiping the scorch marks off the floor and thinking that my mum's going to kill me. Yeah. And so I'm going to be in big trouble. Then I went back into the living room, unbeknownst I... to me, yeah. I dropped one. <gasps> and it was, the living room was completely engulfed in oh. flames. It sounds to me that if you're on your own at home at seven, your mum's pretty laid back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> She said, son, will you sit here and look after these fireworks? <laughs> <laughs> well, that out to the bingo. <laughs> so, you lit the sparkler. A spark went into the standard box. Yes. The box starts to go, you go, uh-oh, I must get them into the most suitable room for fireworks. <laughs> yes. The kitchen. No need to go beyond the kitchen to the outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> Mum said, don't go out. <laughs> At least one oh. rule in your house. <laughs> <laughs> what time of day did all this happen? This happened mid afternoon. Oh dear, so you didn't really get the benefit of it. <laughs> <the rest. laughs> 
Who put the fire out? I went to next door where Miss Best lived. She was, bless her, she's about 80. And I knocked on their door and said, my house is on fire. And she said, do you know, I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened then? She called the fire brigade. They fired their water hoses throughout the house. Yes. Ruining it. Even the rooms Ru where there's... Not, no ruining, not, not ruining it. Yeah. You do know that before they put out fires, it's already ruined, don't you? Lee. You're making this house all wet. It was lovely and warm. Lee. Oh. And it's the water damage yeah. that knackers the yes. house. Which, Is it? Not yeah, the fire? Not the fire. <laughs> if they would use their boots to put it out... <laughs> The yeah. entire house, that's it. I was, in a, I was in a family of four children, and we, had, we were homeless. Where were... <laughs> Bob, keep it light. No, I'm just saying. Where were all the other kids while you were alone with the fire? Why did you take three they children They were looking after fireworks you? in other people's houses. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say you were homeless, how much of the house did the inferno claim? It's gone. Entire house, what, the whole gone. house whole house gone. Yeah. The whole house burnt whole house down. Burnt down. So how much did you leave in the living room? The fireworks in the kitchen have only caused a few scorches. Yeah. What did you leave in the living room? And now, and now, don't you feel stupid for saying standard fireworks? Yeah. I tell Not you, really. they well, I think you were stupid. <laughs> they had like sparkler indoors. <laughs> if you don't know what you dropped yeah. in the living room, is there a chance that it's just a coincidence? No, it could be. Then it might not have been your fault. <laughs> That's what I said to the press. It's not your fault. <laughs> press? Who, what, what press? Who, who, who did you speak to? Local press. Because they, they came to the house while it was burning? Yeah, you know, they're, they're hats on, trilbies, <laughs> sniffing around. <laughs> <laughs> With those little bits of paper in the... <laughs> in the, in the notebook. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Were they called things like Scoop McLean? <laughs> <laughs> I believe he was called Ron Waffle. <laughs> Sorry, Ron so, Waffle. It was either him or the other ace reporter on the Gazette was John Caramel. It was one of them two. <laughs> Caramel and Waffle. <laughs> Honestly. I mean, <laughs> the question is whether you think Bob has been telling the truth. Well, I, was, I thought it seemed very plausible until we heard about <laughs> Caramel and Waffle. <laughs> I think he thinks he's telling the truth, but I think what's happened at some point, he's seen a film <laughs> in which this has happened. He saw backdrop. And is now convinced <laughs> that it happened to him. I think it's a lie. Vera. I, oh, I sort of... I was going to say I want it to be true, but that sounds really horrible. <laughs> just, I think... I don't I think it might be true. Well, I think it's true. I think it's true. So you're going to go for true? Yeah. OK, Bob, were you telling the truth or were you telling... A lie. I was telling the truth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. Bob once set fire to his house with a box of fireworks. John, you're next. When I'm stressed, I often take a water-free bath. <laughs> water-free baths. Liam, <clears throat> his team. Do you, uh, do you get undressed? No. Do you, do you just sit in the bath? Well, I lie in the bath. Oh, of course, because you want to get the imaginary water all over your body, don't you? <laughs> do you imagine there's water in the bath, or do you ex does your mind accept it's not there? No, you know it's not there. I'm not, I'm not an idiot. I know it's not there. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a hovering dock? <laughs> <laughs> how long do you spend in this position? Uh, well, it depends on how stressed I am. If I'm very stressed, I'll be in there a long time. If I'm only a little bit stressed, I'll pop in and I'll pop out again. But what's, what's the benefits? <laughs> what well, I don't see what is stress relieving. Well, a bath it. is stress relieving, isn't it? But then it's quite a faff, isn't it? Running the water, <laughs> taking your clothes off, then you're wet. You can't go out when you're wet, so you've got to dry yourself. Uh. Then you've got to put your clothes back on. Well, if why you don't... just get in without all that faff, you get all the joy of a bath and none of the fuss. <laughs> <laughs> you're from the north, I bet you've got an, just an imaginary flannel. <laughs> You said that like you're not from the north. I'm not. <laughs> if you said that, I, 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 I've completely converted now. Have you told your accent? <laughs> Are you always alone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Sarah, do you mean in life or in the back? <laughs> Whichever one he wants to answer. <laughs> I, you always should be in the bath alone. I think we'll all agree. John, do you do any, like, bath-related things when you're in the non-bath, or do you just shut your eyes and lie there? Uh, sometimes I'll put my dressing gown on over me or a big towel.
Richard. Over your clothes. Over your clothes. Over me. I'll oh, get in the back. the back. Oh, in the back. Oh, right. right now right. suddenly got a bit more disturbing. It's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> It's that's stress relief, isn't it? I don't just sit there, like, in the bath, like, you know, yeah. I don't smoke. But... You can have an imaginary cigarette if you're having an imaginary bath, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you thinking, Lee? Does this, does this smack of the truth? Um, what do we think, David? I think it's total nonsense. Do you? Yeah. Putting the thing over your head, I think it would add to the stress, as opposed to relieving it. I'm going for a lie. You're going for a lie? I'm going for a lie. Going for a lie in his bath, fully clothed. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, come to think, a fart's not going to be half the fun in this non-bath, is it? <laughs> so we're going to say lie. Lie. My team say lie, so I have to go with them and You're say lie. You're all saying it's a lie. OK, yeah. John Richardson, were you just telling us the truth or were you telling a lie? It was, sadly, true. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, I was it? Oh, let's end the show there. Let's end the show, though. We'll have a quick jet with John. We'll bring on Jeremy <laughs> Kyle. And we'll just end it <laughs> yes, it's true. When John is stressed, he has a water-free bath. <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Keith. <laughs> Bob, first of all. Bob, what is Keith to you? Uh, this is Keith. He's my oldest friend. And when we were at school together, we had a dictaphone in the classroom ceiling to confuse our teacher. <laughs> uh, David Harewood. Uh, this is my old teacher, Keith. I once had to claim I wasn't me when I met him in a cafe as I was in character preparing for Homeland. And finally, Lee, uh, your relationship with Keith. This is Keith and his hawk... Yes. <laughs> yes. I'll admit, David, it's a difficult start. <laughs> well, go with it. Yeah. <laughs> this is Keith. And his hawk was supposed to land on my arm at a village fete, but instead stole the wig from the man next to me and flew off into a tree. <laughs> So there we are. It's uh, Bob's classroom prankster, it's David's blanked buddy, or it's Lee's hawk handler. David's team, where do you start? So, yes, David, what... He was a teacher at your school. Very briefly. What, a whole lesson? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if... I mean, I could... I would see him. You'd see, in, but he didn't teach the, you? No, not teach He was me. someone who hung around a school <laughs> and he was... Charitably, you assumed he was a teacher. <laughs> school a short period of time how did you even recognize him in the cafe oh i knew it was him mm -hmm. he walked into the cafe and he said hi david room and basically i blanked him it was literally the, the month before i went to america when i was doing a, a homeland and i'd just been to see my dialect coach he basically said i have to stay in my american voice so would you not have explained that to yeah. him in your american voice i'm I, sorry I, buddy but I'm doing a wall here. <laughs> you, I, I don't think it was ever as good as that, John, to be fair. I basically just had to say, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, that's... I, that's I'm remembering I you now. Do, do the I, voice a bit more. I straight. said, I don't know what you're talking about. Ooh, that did weird things to me. <laughs> so your dialect coach said, you're in this role, you need to stay in this character. Yeah. Now the lesson's over, let's go to a very public place. Yeah. We are likely to encounter several people. Well, that's what you have to do. You have to stay in that voice. You have to have the confidence to stay in your voice. Why can't you, you just, like, turn it on like an actor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a cheap shot, Sarah. I did... I have to say, I did phone him up afterwards and apologise. So you had his number? <laughs> <laughs> you stayed in touch with the teacher you barely remember. <laughs> Would it be fair to say the hawk's looking a bit more plausible? <laughs> So, David, who would you like to question next? Um, Bob, uh, yeah, r remind us of your allegation. When we were at school together, we had a, a dictaphone machine in the ceiling tiles to um, interrupt the lesson. So not to record, but to play stuff? Yeah. What ha sort of stuff? Well, it was um, important to keep a gap at the beginning, so we let it run 
for about 15 minutes. And then there was the noise of a fly. <laughs> <laughs> for a brief period, then another bit pre period. To confuse the teacher. Where would you get the noise from the fly? You'd make the noise. We'd make the noise ourselves, let's, yeah. let's I'm not paying for noise. no fly to do it. <laughs> <laughs> let, let's hear your fly. <laughs> you know, what? It just sound like can a I, fly. Can I hear your bee? I, we didn't do a bee. Oh. Do you know how to do a bee? Just uh, like that fly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's more, it's more wholesome if it's a bee, isn't it? Show me the difference, David. Well, I don't know, I'm, I'm not... Do well, we? I'd say, OK, a bee would be a sort of a foot... Like, <laughs> no, that's a bumblebee. Well, a fly yeah. is a... <laughs> Very good, that's good. Right, Very good. Right. Do you see the way he just slipped straight in and out of character? Yeah. So, you, so yes, there was it. silence. Yeah. Then a little bit of fly, silence, yeah. a little bit of fly, and then, quite loudly, but not to frighten anyone, the word wolf. <laughs> Oh, a bit more silence. Yeah. Then yeah. Speedway Stadium. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Speedway Stadium. Yeah. Do, uh, do you know the idea was was just to say kind of random things. We had a, he was a really nice teacher called um, Bill Whittlingham. <laughs> <laughs> How did Bill Whittlingham react to these random sounds? Well, Mr. Whittlingham <laughs> left the room and said, "Can you sort this out by the time I've gone back?" <laughs> What? Okay, so, whatever it is that's going on. And there was a cupboard in the corner huh. where, interestingly, it had, like, exercise books in it, pens and that, but it also had, a, in a little cage, a hand lion, <laughs> which is a robotic... That it's a battery-operated thing. What? Are you just... Uh, are you just saying any words that come into your head <laughs> in any order? <laughs> well, it's a hand lion, and if you... A hand been, lion? It's a, it, it, a robotic, elect animatronic hand lion, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> and if you'd been particularly good... <laughs> He would put it on your hand and set it to lick and it'd uh. lick it. <laughs> if you'd been particularly... Is this like a clockwork lion? No, it was remote control. It I was promise. remote control? Remote control. He <laughs> had the controller in his desk and he said, you've, but, the, but you've the been such a good boy, lion. get out the hand lion and you'll get a lick. <laughs> and if you'd been bad, you put him on your hand and you strike. It strike at your hand. So, so the hand lion had two settings. It could lick or it could strike. Yes, good boy, bad boy. Right, very good sensible. Good boy, bad boy. Now, the only problem with it, of course, was... What, this story? It would... <laughs> <laughs> the only problem was, of course, if the batteries got low, yeah. it would get constipated. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway, but in this cupboard... So we got up on the cupboard... Um, you and, climb onto the cupboard that yes. the hand lion is, yes. is housed in. Probably asleep. Right. You, you reach up onto the ceiling tile. Take out the dictaphone. Switch it off. Yep. Mr Whittlingham yes. comes back in. Yes. What happens? He's nervously awaiting another, uh, you know, addict from above. Yeah. Doesn't come, carry on with the lesson. Um, British government and politics it was. There Sorry, was what a lesson was the... called British government and politics? Yeah. Our British year on that? Uh, two years. It was A-level. For the sixth formers, yes. a hand lion... <laughs> a hand lion that can either lick or strike <laughs> was what was used to express praise or, or the opposite <laughs> to these 17 or 18-year-old students. And it, and it was very effective. <laughs> All right. Would you like to move on to the final claim? So, Lee, tell yeah. the story about Keith. I was at a village fete. And, uh, Why were you at a village fete? I was helping out. What at village? The... Thames Ditton. Why were you helping out at Thames Ditton fete? Because uh, I don't live too far away from there and they asked me to help out and I did a few little things, like I did I did a bit of tombola, a bit of announcing. Then I went over to judge the, the pig racing. The usual things you do at a fete, you know. <laughs> the pig racing? Yeah. I don't know why I judged it, cos surely first past the post, but... Well, no, I... <laughs> <laughs> I was doing case of a dead heat. And, and what happened with the with the hawk and Keith and the wig? One of the things um, I had to do was to volunteer to stand there and, and learn. He had the little uh, headpiece on where he'd teach the crowd basic falconry, I believe we call it. I stick the uh, the stick the glove on and yeah. uh, then hold this little thing. I don't know what it was, but I'm doing this. A I'm small a bit morsel of meat. Thank God you've been to one, because I haven't. Yeah. I'm holding a small <laughs> morsel of meat. Then what happens? <laughs> and then... Uh, then and the, the swan comes the down. The swan came down. <laughs> uh, so, the hawk comes over, right? 
it comes up about there's a person missing from this story and it's the mur right the local mur I can't yeah. say it in, in... I always well, struck... Mayor. Yeah. The mur. mayor. The mayor, right? <laughs> the so mayor you're of standing London. next to a horse. Yeah, so the local... <laughs> so the, the, the mayor is doing his bit, but the mayor has got a wig on, right? The hawk flies over to go and land on my hand, but he lands on the mayor's head, and so he gets caught up in his... In his what should we call them? Uh, talons. 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 He gets caught up in the talons, and then, in the sort of panic, the bird sort of... And he can't release this wig, and, and he flies off and he goes into the tree. I said, why didn't he go for the meat? And he said, I genuinely think the gold chain caught his eye, there was a bit of confusion for a second, and he just did a bit of an emergency landing on a... <laughs> on, on a Merz wig at Thames Den Fate. What's there not to believe? <laughs> at that point, did you, did you cry, oh, no, the Merz hers over there? <laughs> So David's team is Keith, <laughs> Bob's classroom prankster, David's blanked buddy, or Lee's hawk handler. I was believing Bob until the fact that he was 18 and the hand lying. <laughs> I'm leaning towards David. I think I'm leaning towards David. I think, I think it's Bob, and I think he panicked because he knew we were onto him, so he went on a ridiculous riff about hand lying to throw us off the scent. <laughs> I'll go Bob, but I've been wrong before. Tara? I'm going to go David. We'll go David. You're saying David. Mm -hmm. Keith, please reveal your true identity. My name's Keith, and uh, Bob and I recorded voices <laughs> and hid the dictaphones in the ceiling. Right, well, Bob. <laughs> yes. Um, Keith is Bob's classroom prankster. I would never have believed that all that stuff about a hand line was completely true. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Keith. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Live. We start with... <coughs> it's Sarah Millican. Possession. Ah, there's a box under your desk. Would you pop it on the desk? And then, first of all, read out the card that's inside before you show us what the possession is. This is my cat cam. I put it around my cat's neck for a week to film what I got up to because I believed it was him who kept turning the kitchen tap on. <laughs> OK, let's take this item out and pop it on the desk. Right, Lee's team, cat cam. So you're saying that the, you thought the cat might be turning the tap on? Yes. Well, we know it wasn't John. <laughs> So you put the cat cam on the cat for yes. how long? For, well, generally like an hour at a time, but while I was out. So the cat's clever enough not to be turning this tap on when you're in? <laughs> well, yeah, because I would just see him doing it and then I would know it was him. If he could do the tap, were you not worried that he could turn the camera off? <laughs> <laughs> no, because the, the tap's like one of those ones where that's quite fiddly. Uh. And how do you see the picture? You connect it to a computer? Yeah, it's Is there just a got USB a USB on there? thing, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see, OK. You attach it to the computer, mm -hmm. and how long are you watching? An hour at a time? Well, you, you fast-forward it. I'm not sitting oh, just watching... the highlights. You're doing the highlights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, the big question and, and is... Was it the cat? Um, not so far, but I'm still... It's still Somebody's sort of turning the taps on when you go out of the house. It's kind of a work in progress. <laughs> so when, you, when you come back... I hope he's not watching, cos... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, he's <laughs> turned this off. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Very just. Mm. Yes. Why didn't you attach the camera to the tap? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. What's the name of your cat, sir? It's called Chief Brody. And and the personality is he a scratcher? He is a scratcher. On bits of On furniture. Arms. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's not so much of a worry. It's the furniture is more the thing, isn't it? Is it? Thanks. <laughs> Can I ask why you're so worried about the cat turning the taps on when you've got something in your house that's attacking you? I wouldn't mind well, if it's turning the tap on if it's scratching my face. Well, that's because you're not a cat lover. No, but I don't like things that scratch. Well, don't get a cat then. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the weirdo here? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We have a show of hands. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's so lovely to hear because usually it's me. <laughs> What, what colour is your cat, Sarah? Ginger. Hmm, pink collar, ginger cat. Oh. <laughs> Would you? It's red, it's not Would pink. Would it pink? Oh. It's red. Oh, please, it's pink. It's Tell red, me. shut your face. <laughs> <laughs> red and ginger, devil's finger. <laughs> what? 
That's what they say. Who? Who says that? No one says that. They do. Is that what your mum And they're still saying it. So what do you think, Lee? Is she telling the truth? What do we think, Bob? I'm saying it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. David's saying it's possibly true. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll lie. OK, you're saying lie. Sarah, truth or lie? It is a lie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Sarah didn't put a cat cam on her cat. Next. <coughs> it's uh, David Harewood. <clears throat> I can balance a banknote on my nose. <clears throat> How, when did you first find this out? When I was about um, 13. Is it flat or is it sort of like that? It's on, of... on its kind of... on its. On its... On its edge? Yes. Okay. And, and I would balance it on, on like that. Is what? Straight like up? That. Yes. Yeah. No, on your kind nose? Of, kind of like that. The, so the, the end of yes. the note yes. is along your nose there, yeah. going upwards. Yes. And what's your technique for... Because I imagine the problem with that is that the note would immediately fall off. Well, what's your technique kind of... for preventing that? Zen. Zen? Zen. Is that a type of glue? <laughs> What do you think, David? Does this have the ring of truth for you? I don't think it does. I think it's an odd mixture of something that would be impossible and not that impressive anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? I think we think it's a lie. I think it's a lie. Three of you, all three of you think it's a yeah. lie. OK. David Harewood. Truth or lie? It is true. Whoa! <laughs> Oh, no, no. Yes, it's true. <laughs> oh, you pulled well, that out at just the right time for us. Cheers, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, have to stand, I have to stand up for this. All right, please do. Here we go. Take your time, milk <clears throat> it. Yes, it's yeah. true. Oh, and that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. And I can tell you that Lee's team have triumphed by three points to two. Hey. Uh, but, of course, it's not just a team game. And my individual liar of the week this week is Bob Mortimer. <laughs> yes, Bob Mortimer. If you were looking for an effortless liar, then Bob's your uncle. At least he says he's your uncle. He's probably lying about that, too. Good night. <laughs>